Today, I'm gonna talk about closets, 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 closets. But you know what? Sounds better when Sofia Vergara says it. Okay, let's actually talk about your closets and how you can make them more Instagram ready. Even if you never put it on Instagram, I'm gonna share with you some of those key tips and tricks that organizers use to make closets look perfect. Then we'll get into how to do a seasonal changeover and some really easy closet decluttering tips. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you're a fan of Modern Family. In this house, both Chad and I have a relatively small closet. In our older house, we had a big walk-in closet. And that actually made us pretty lazy and complacent when it came to clothing. The reason it's great to have a smaller closet is because it kind of forces your hand to do a seasonal changeover. And I'm gonna tell you why those are so beneficial. First of all, who wants to sort through turtlenecks and heavy pants in the middle of June if you live in a Four Seasons place like I do? I only want to see my spring summer stuff. It is way easier to get dressed that way. I remember previously I'd have to like sort through all of my wintry stuff to get to a nice summer outfit. Having only the seasonally appropriate stuff actually makes getting dressed a lot easier. When you go through and do your seasonal change out, the idea is that you wanna take everything out of your closet and pluck out the things that you no longer wear, love, or fit you anymore, and then just pack away the seasonal stuff that you wanna bring out for next year. I always leave my four season stuff in the closet, jeans, button up tops, that kind of thing. Things that I you know, can kind of get away with wearing the whole year but my seasonal stuff, goodbye, I don't wanna look at it. The next reason I love doing it is because it helps me identify where the gaps in my wardrobe are. So let's say I'm like, you know what? I really need a tie-dye shirt. No, I don't, I have plenty of those. It's also important to do this with your seasonal gear. So if that's winter boots, hats, jackets, coats, all of that stuff should go somewhere else as well into storage. And another thing that's kind of fun about doing a closet changeover for the seasons is that when you take your stuff out from last year, it kind of feels new again. You haven't looked at it in a while, so it's kind of like you get this little vibe of new stuff even though you haven't actually paid for it. Now, if you have a giant walk-in closet, I still encourage you to do this because it's gonna help you pare down what you have and you don't love in there. And at the very least, you can separate your fall, winter, and spring, summer stuff out. For those of you with smaller closets like me, you wanna make sure to have the appropriate storage containers handy, whether that's plastic bins or airtight zipper lock bags. You can also get garment bags, boxes for your shoes and so on. Just make sure you have what you need. The first thing any professional organizer is going to tell you is to declutter because shopping or getting dressed in a jammed closet is really difficult and frustrating. So the idea is that if you have kind of a nice airy closet with stuff that you love and that fits you really well, you can piece outfits together easier. How to declutter your closet or how to do a seasonal closet changeover? I got you, we're gonna cover that at the end of the video. So the first tip is if your closet is jammed full and you really can't see all the pieces you have in there, it's a sure sign that you have to declutter. When it comes to hangers, choose wisely and be consistent. I'm gonna talk you through the pros and cons of plastic, wood, and velvet hangers. Let's start with plastic. The pro, I suppose, is that it's inexpensive, but to me, the cons outweigh the pros. I've found over, year, over the years that plastic hangers are pretty flimsy, they end up breaking, they don't really age well, uh, and you know what? We kind of phased out the plastic hangers in our home in favor of wood hangers, which I will now tell you about. So one of the interesting features of a wood hanger is that it's slightly curved, if you look at the profile, and some of them are even more curved. And that's so that this can hold a shoulder. If you have like a nice fancy shirt and it's curved, it kind of gives you a bit more of that shoulder. Whereas if you have a super flat hanger, like a velvet or a plastic hanger, the shoulder you might get like a little notch or you might notice where the hanger mark was. But I'm gonna talk more about this in a sec. Other pros of the wood hangers, they kind of look boutique-y and very high-end and nice in a closet. They're also durable and that's why we ultimately switched to wood. We also like that it's the most sustainable material of the three. But the con, I will tell you, is that they are costly and they take up more space in your closet. So you really have to be particular with everything you're putting in there because you can't load it up. The same way you could 
if you were using a velvet hanger. Velvet hangers are designed specifically to be slim profile hangers. The reason we love velvet on a hanger is because it creates a little bit of friction. So a con I should have mentioned for the other two is that they're slippery materials, whereas velvet really holds a garment in place and you're not gonna have that sliding around. The issue to me with velvet is it also is a little bit flimsy and I don't love the mentality of stuffing a whole bunch of stuff in your closet. It actually makes it really hard to flip through and find stuff, which is why I'm personally not a fan of these, but that is just my opinion. The first rule is to organize everything by color. So when your items come out of your closet, you're gonna look and assess what you have and you're gonna figure out the color scheme that you want going on. In my closet, I start with whites, then grays, then I do all of my colors in classic Roy G. Biv, and then I move my way over to dark navy and black at the very end. So that is the color organization scheme that I use. The second rule is to organize by garment type. So just because I have a black pair of pants and a black turtleneck doesn't mean they're hanging side by side. The way I've laid out my closet is I have my dresses and jumpsuits on one part of the closet, then I have my shirts, sweaters, tops in the middle, and then I have blazers and jackets and vests on the right, and then on the lower rack I have my jeans, and then I have my pants and skirts. So everything, I know where it is in terms of what type of garment, so if I'm looking for, say, a skirt and a sweater, I know exactly what section to grab from. The third rule is to organize by fabric weights. So that way when you're in each section and you're in each color, you now know that you can go from lightest to heaviest fabric weight. And that is how you're gonna slot everything in. This is a really simple way to return everything to your closet. It's almost like having an implied library system in your closet, if you will. So you always know when you hang something up exactly where you need to put it without having to think too hard. So this is how I do it. I open the closet. I start filing through. This is my filing through hand motion. Anything that has four seasons stays in there. Four seasons meaning I can get away with wearing it in December. I can get away with wearing it in July. White button up shirt, great example. Okay, so that stuff is staying in, but anything that I don't need or is even a color I don't wanna wear, like, you know, a Merlot. I don't wanna wear that in the summer. No thanks. So all of that stuff comes out. It goes on my bed take off the hangers, I sort through, I look very quickly, do I like this? Yes, it goes, I fold it, I put it into my bin. If I don't like it, it goes into a pile on the floor and I decide if I'm gonna sell it or donate it. Selling being on like a clothing reseller website like Poshmark. So once all of that is done, the items that are going into storage, I will leave on the bed. Then I open up my storage containers from spring, summer of last year, and I start to pull each item out and I do the same thing. I assess it. I'm like, okay, was this super 2020 and I don't want to wear it anymore? If that's the case, it goes in the same donation pile or sales pile. And if it's something that I know I'm going to wear again, I will put it onto a hanger or I put it into the laundry because guess what? When you're sitting in a plastic container for six months, you start to smell. So I end up doing a lot of laundry on closet changeover day. When everything comes out of the wash, I hang it up in accordance with all the rules I was telling you about earlier and voila, my closet is done. Now the good news is the same process can apply to your drawers. So there are a lot of things that I fished out of my drawers where I usually keep my sweats and my heavier stuff you know, I don't need that stuff during the summer, so I swap that out for my bathing suits and cover-ups. Great. Doing this twice annual closet changeover has become a ritual for me. I actually really like doing it. Getting dressed and being creative with my clothing is actually so much easier this way. And I always know that I'm picking stuff out that fits me, that looks great, and that feels fashionable, at least in my eyes. And for all of those closet organizing rules, it, just following them, they're so simple, has made my closet so much more appealing to look at instead of stressful. I hope you found these tips helpful and I'd love to know in the comments down below, what would your dream closet look like? Would you want one of those like giant two-story ones with a twirly staircase and a glass and shelf for your handbags? No, for me, I, I would probably just want something, you know, a little bit bigger than what I have now, but with shoe storage. I really miss having shelves for shoes. So let me know what you would want in the comments down below. If you want to get motivated to clean and organize your closets and drawers, I got you. We put a whole playlist together that you can check out that will get you in the mood and give you even more great tips. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel. Thanks so much for watching.
and we'll see you next time.